I now welcome expert collector and exhibitionist, Adrian Newstead. Exhibitionist. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a show shortly, I think. <laughs> Executive Director of the Kui Aboriginal Art Gallery. <laughs> You won't mind if I undress. <laughs> uh, thank you all for having me, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'd like to especially pay my respects to Gordon and Elaine. And, um, you know, we all live in what we, most of us think is the greatest country in, in the earth, and uh, we should be all eternally grateful to the Aboriginal people. Um, who held it in their trust until we arrived. Uh, and I pay my respects to all Aboriginal people across this beautiful country that we live in. Um, you know, I guess I'm here because uh, I've been a long-time supporter of uh, Gordon's, a long-time admirer of his art. Uh, but also, I'm probably one of the few people in this room that actually know intimately or fairly intimately their entire collection and that's one of that's the main reason we're here uh, you know most of us collect art most of us have got some something on our walls by the way hi Val how are you and uh, I've seen her collection and I'm delighted she's here and that there's a possibility that the that all of this material might be drawn together. Uh, Gordon and Elaine um, have collected some 1,200 objects that I've seen and valued. And there's a lot more in boxes and, uh, <laughs> and bundles that I haven't been able to get at. But, you know, uh, not only has Gordon been a prolific painter or most of his adult life, but also he has uh, known so many of the important Koori and Murray artists um, and artists from the outback as well, but amongst his friends, so many uh, important urban artists that have stayed with him, that he's, um, that he's helped, that he's swapped paintings with, and this is how they're rather unique collection has come into being. And every collection has a kind of focus, otherwise it's a disparate group of objects. And this one has a very, very special focus because it's actually put together by an Aboriginal person himself. And not just uh, because he thought the paintings were of monetary value. That's, that's been of no concern to him whatsoever. You know, artists swap their work because they respect each other, because they respect what they're saying to each other and to the community about what they're painting. And Gordon has swapped paintings and collected paintings um, and tried to, uh, but with, with Elaine, they've, they've run their own gallery with their own particular focus. And so this, these objects have come together in a very, very unique way. And they've done everything they can to hold on to them and keep them as a collection. As a collection, they tell a very unique story, um, as I say, because they've been collected by an Aboriginal person and have, you know, so there's a different set of values around it. And if Aboriginal people are going to tell the, the history of Australia, in their own way, not through the words of a white person or an anthropologist or a, or a curator that happens to have had the opportunity to go to a, you know, a university or art school and be, get a degree in museum studies or curatorship or whatever, um, then um, you know, this is the perfect start, in a way, that, um, that building on the collection of Gordon Elaine the collection that Val managed to put together of pieces from, you know, out, out in New South Wales around Oberon or around that sort of area, isn't it? Uh, Narandri, was that your...? Yes? Yeah? Right. 
So, <coughs> and then um, adding it to other collections, and then it starts to make some sense. And of course, that's what I feel about Aboriginal art in general. That, you know, during the last um, hundred years, that Aboriginal people have been make, put, making their art in a portable form, I estimate that there's been some five million paintings painted by Aboriginal people. Lots of them were painted just for, for cash money and, uh, and to feed a tourist market or whatever. But at least 100,000 of those five million paintings uh, are Aust Aboriginal Australia's unique and important legacy to, to us, all Australians. And amongst those 100,000, there are tens of thousands of extremely important works of art. Many of them are now in institutions. They hang in the, on, in the homes of people that are their current custodians. All of them await the opportunity, the time, when and that will come over the next 100, 200, 300, 500 years, when uh, scholarship can be applied and the real meaning of the story can be told. You know, I look at the paintings that have been produced during the last 30, 40 years, and I see them almost like uh, a box of jigsaw puzzle pieces. You know, the, the jigsaw puzzle pieces have been uh, have been dispersed on the winds of commercial transaction and end up on the walls of homes, uh, in, in museums here and overseas. But the great job is bringing all the jigsaw puzzle pieces back together so that the real story can be seen and told. And that is, that is the job of the generations to come. And uh, I wish them well in that endeavour because uh, what they're going to find is an abundance of riches. Uh, and I believe the story uh, that will be told will be as great as, probably greater, than in the stained glass windows of Chartres Cathedral or um, in the great uh, libraries of the world. Uh, this is Aboriginal Australia's great legacy. And, uh, the magna magnanimity of Aboriginal people is that they've been prepared to share it with us. And now it's uh, time to really recognise the <coughs> profound nature of that body of work and to interpret it in the way that it deserves to be interpreted. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian.